What's up, it's your girl Nina Loretta Nina with the motherfucking nine, and we back again with no losing. Don't forget the nine, by the way. Peace. This episode is sponsored by Karee Restaurant and Bar, one of the dopest restaurants in the French Quarter, located in New Orleans. I promise you, the egg rolls are smoking, the lamb chops are amazing. You will love it. Two three nine Decatur Street, New Orleans, Louisiana, zip code seven zero one three zero. She back, you know. <laughs> back, back, back. I heard, I saw y'all. I didn't hear. But I saw y'all talking shit about me in them comments. They talked a whole lot of stuff. Y'all like, talk a whole lot of shit. They was. <laughs> <laughs> and it was like, people really don't believe that, you know, if it's your baby father, is your cousin. Like, everybody think it was bait, catfish, and all that. Like, what's your message for all the, you know, the people that, because, you know, there was like people actually in the comments, like, you know, yeah, but I wonder how the kids look. But on the clip, you actually tell them your kids are fine. Yeah, they perfect. Perfectly fine. <laughs> so, so like, hey, but when you read your comments on, you know, all these viral clips you be having, like, all right, what's the first thing that actually I'm like come to your mind when you be seeing? I ain't gonna lie. So the thing is, I be killing my fucking self laughing. Like y'all be too serious. Y'all be going in and on comments. Y'all be writing paragraphs and whole time I be dying laughing. <laughs> Like, y'all be saying the stupidest shit about me. Y'all be dying laughing. For real. Gotcha. Dying laughing. So, you know, right now, but you in New Orleans back again. And you actually making one bounce song. So, yeah. and so before you, you know, chime in and comment on that, like, growing up for yourself in Louisiana, can you tell us, I'm like, what year and, like, who was the who was the first bounce artist that you actually ever heard? So I had heard about so so mind you I I we lived in New Orleans like I didn't leave New Orleans till I was like literally twelve after Hurricane Katrina but so like I had always heard bounce music but the first bounce artist to like catch my attention to like grasp me in was Sissy Noby <laughs> like when I heard Sissy Noby for the first time it was like that was my favorite and um, who it was Black and Mal Black and Mal is just that one I still want to meet him to this day. Man, yeah. if we can so make I'm gonna it say happen. Brooklyn and, and Sissy Novi, for sure. Gotcha. So you know, hey, before as you, I'm like making a bounce song. Actually, I'm like, what made you actually reach out to? I'm like producer. I'm like Michael, and like you know, how everything. I'm like came about. So you know, me and Michael been locked in since when I was signed to Boosie. So we we just we we always hitting each other up about working and shit. You know, bounce music is something he do well. Even though he do other music too, like he made. Um, my song, Drug Dealer, and I got a song with him called Disclosed. It's not out yet, but, like, those are regular songs. So he don't just do bounce music. Like, he cold with other beats, too. So it's like, I'm already doing other beats, but I might as well try a bounce beat. Like, I'm from Louisiana. I used to live in New Orleans. Like, I know how to do it. I'm not a bounce artist, which I don't even see myself now converting to a bounce artist, but I know how to do it. So it's like... I made a good bounce song, <laughs> like so. But I don't want to be a bounce artist. But shout out to all the bounce artists, though. I love the vibe. I love the energy. I know y'all be in the studio turned up, but like I'm, I'm just a regular rapper. But yeah, I tried it. I did and dabbed into it. All right. So like you know, <laughs> when did you think that you learned how to actually? I'm like twerk. I'm actually so doing a bounce. That's song. so that. <laughs> that's what. I, so when I had first moved to um, New Orleans. And I was going to uh, McDonald 32. And um, so I'm from Monroe. So down there, we didn't really do bounce. We really down there jigging and shit. So, like, we all outside for recess. Where well, everybody doing they bounce dances and shit like that. I'm like, I can't do that, but I could jig. I could do these other dances. And mind you, I was a dancer back at school in um, Monroe and shit. So I actually knew how to dance. So I'm break dancing my Sierra shit, you know, my jig. And they like, bitch, you really can dance. So my little friends that I had, they showing me how to move my booty and shit. And, you know, I always had a big booty. Like, even as a kid, even at, like, 12, 13 years, I always had an ass on me. So, you know, I learned how to move my little ass. And at that point, I'm seeing everybody doing this and this and ass going crazy with their hands and shit. And I'm like, I want to do that. <laughs> so, yeah, I learned how to do it. So, like, <laughs> and so why you think females see other females twerking? Like, man, I want to do that, too. It, it depends on how good they make it look. And, and mind you, New Orleans twerkers, is like, different from other twerkers. Like, when you see a New Orleans girl moving her ass, her ass is going crazy. The motherfucker going this way, that way. It's, it's just going. Like, versus a regular girl twerking her ass, she twerking good. But it's like, I don't know. I always want to twerk like New Orleans people. Like, I don't know. 
and I still can't. I still don't have it down packed to this day. It's some. It's something y'all do with y'all back that I just don't. It's, well, you I know what? Know. I'm gonna bring you to karaoke tonight, <laughs> and I'm gonna get somebody to teach Nina yeah, how to twerk. Teach me how to New Orleans twerk. I know how to twerk it. You know the regular way, but you know how y'all be. You know. You gotta yeah. do something, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Because, you know, I just saw something on someone's page and they said that, you know, hey, but twerking came from, like, other places. Like, for as your knowledge, what do you think, I'm like, twerking came from? It came from a certain place. Yeah, like, I thought it came from bounce music. Oh, but Luke acting like he claimed, like, you know, he started twerk back in the day. Oh, from pop, pop that pussy, right. pop, pop. But I honestly thought it was a bounce thing. I don't know. If I'm wrong, correct me. Like, Master P on the movie, I'm bowed, it called the Pussy Pop. Yeah. And you know. You know, I watched that movie a hundred times. He definitely did. Twerking. You know, I started twerking maybe mid, I mean, late 90s. But I heard it here because I'm from here. Yeah. But I don't know. You know, I don't know if you know. I Me just had personally, to ask. I always thought, you know, unless I don't know, I thought it was a <laughs> bounce thing. I it's know. a bounce thing? I don't know. Maybe my mind is stuck in Louisiana. I don't know. Gotcha. I ain't really just saw. Even to this day, I don't really just see other places twerking like Louisiana twerk. I don't know. So if it did come from somewhere else, we de we definitely took it. So gotcha. that's so, the case. <laughs> so you know, being partially, or like inspired about bounce as well, bounce music. Name your top five bounce music artists. <sighs> Sissy Nova for sure. Uh, Black and Mal. Um. Um, what's her name? Is it Soldier Slim? He yeah. was Magnolia Slim when oh, he was a bounce not, artist. Not Soldier Slim. Magnolia Shorty? Magnolia Shorty. Okay. I like her. Um, I'm going to go back to today, though. Today, I'm going to say Super Bad. And that me personally, I actually listening to in my car is Super Bad and Reedy. Shout out both of them as yeah. well. Gotcha. I listen to them. So let's get off the bounce. Hey, but let's go back to, the, oh, to our last interview, <laughs> you know. We talked about golden showers and Diddy. Ooh, that didn't we, age well. That didn't age <laughs> well. And like you know, he's a What's going on with Diddy. And he's a tropical. So, but hold on, before we talk about Diddy though, I am gonna admit that if I would have made it in the industry around the time these things were going on, I would have been at the parties. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie. You know, I'm not gonna lie. So I would have been there. And so if Diddy beat all these charges, you still going to the parties? No, I'm not saying now. <laughs> I'm saying if I was in the industry during the time the parties was happening, I would have been one of the people in the that that was there. I wouldn't have been doing no fucked up shit. You right. know, I probably would have been doing some freaky shit, but definitely not. You would have been part of the freako. <laughs> I like I I got an adventurous mind. <laughs> so, yeah, I wouldn't have been a part of the forceful, you know, sicko shit. But you know the the you know the freaky foursome shit. You know. So so just to throw it out there, like, what do you think be going on at these parties? I think it's just one big orgy. <laughs> to be honest, but I don't know. From what I hear now, I think I think I think I think every male that comes to his party, he gonna try him like. I don't know. I, I don't I know. I just saw a clip. He tried Mike Tyson. He didn't. He tried Mike Tyson on the interview. Like he put his hand down there. And Mike Tyson moved his hand. I'm like, oh, I'm like, he a bold dude. Like, like he's freaky as fuck. Like, why you want to fuck all these men? Like, I think it's a power thing. It's definitely a power thing. I think thing. I think he wants to have that ego over them. But I'm not. Like, well, also, I'm not saying he done these things. I'm just saying well, what the media said. He definitely done them. You think he done them? He did it. And whatever they say about Diddy, he did that shit? Yeah, he definitely did it. <laughs> I feel like you definitely got to tell Diddy no. And I feel like Carisha did everything that they said she did too, but you know. You, I'm going to tell you, Carisha reminds me a lot of you. I think you and Carisha, I think you and Carisha <laughs> will have the greatest podcast Hold ever. Hold on, because I like Carisha, stories. but I'm telling you, I think she did it because I would have... Right, right, but I'm saying I think <laughs> y'all both honesty and just y'all personality. I think y'all have one dope ass podcast together. Yeah, I like Carisha. I like Carisha, but I just know she did it because you know it's just it just whatever they said about Carisha. Yeah, but she did that yeah, too. Huh? If it was me, it would have been a whatever they said. Nina did. Nina did it. In nine times ten, I did it. So yeah, <laughs> I did it. <laughs> and had a time doing it. That's why. That's why. Like most people be scared to blow up because they be like. Oh, what if I blow up and people try to expose me or try to do this? If I blow up today, like I don't, it ain't nothing nobody can put out 
about me or say about me that's going to shame me because I know what the fuck I did when I was doing it, and I'll probably do it again, and I probably had a blast doing it. It ain't no exposing me. And definitely don't try to put out no sex takes about me because, bitch, I look good. I don't care. You was like, man, you see my moves? Bitch, I'd be like, do you see me? Like, <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> so, like, it ain't no exposing me. But, see, the difference is it's not the women that's, like, you know, if the women feel played, but it's the dudes that's afraid of those. And it was if the little cameras that was hidden. Because, you know, yeah. every day say, you know, every, like, once a dude get in the industry, if they'll get him drunk, drug him up. Somebody go like off D-Lo, in D-Lo, his, his shit is bad. Like D-Lo? Boss Man D-Lo? What happened to Boss Did Man d Did you see D-Lo? his sex tape? I don't want to see Boss Man D-Lo's sex tape, but you can explain it, though. His penis is is the size of a shrimp, really. Literally. Like, no bigger. So, as a kid, I just, I told my wife this. <laughs> I thought everybody, thing was the same size. Until, <laughs> until women start saying that, you know, it's not. So, I didn't believe women were like, oh, shrimp dick. Like, so, like, have you ever, like, have a dude ever pulled out, maybe, like, a little, I'm like, shrimp thing on you before? Mm-hmm. And, and, like, I mean, what but did you listen, do after? No, no fucking cap. I didn't have a dick the size of my pinky. And it was, I, I orgasmed back to back to back to back to back to back to back. Like, what the fuck was this little motherfucker doing? Like, that little bit magic, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but I didn't have a big thing that, like, didn't do hurt nothing. it. Like, it, like, stop. Like it's big and you don't know what to do with it. Like so. Hey, so it's safe to say that I'm like Nina Loretta likes shrimp dicks. No, I don't like shrimp <laughs> dicks. But what I'm saying is, I don't think it's the size it's that, the size matter. that matter. It's the way that nigga. It's the motion of the stroke. It's what that, that nigga know how to do with his penis. Like, like, but do you think that a female just able her body moves off of her feelings towards the person or she yeah. like that person? So like, like he can have a shrimp dick, but if you really like him. You you know if it's your body or you know your pussy already wet from um, so just I'm like gonna em. say this so like with females and I learned this as I got older. Um, sex is mental, so it's like if you fucking a nigga you don't give a fuck about anyways. Your pussy not gonna nine times ten not gonna get wet if your mind not there anyways. So like I don't know. I just I just think if, if depending on how you love that nigga, if you really love that nigga, you pro- could probably deal with a, a good shrimp dick. If it was a bad shrimp dick, you were like, no, you can't be little and then have bad sex. Like, that's a, a no-no. But I feel like if you love him, you could probably deal with a good shrimp dick. But I feel like a woman, um, a lot of men be confused with women. They be like, oh, that bitch. Because, I, I, you know, I hang with a lot of niggas. So a lot of my homies will be like, oh, that bitch pussy was dry. Oh, bitch pussy was this. And when they say that, I look at them like. Okay, so you you bragging about her pussy being dry? Do you know that mean that you didn't do nothing to turn her on to make her wet? <laughs> so it's like I don't know. I think I want, it, it all depends on um, how a woman fuck with you. The crazy part is like when I heard you, I'm like explaining about I'm like shrimp dick. I thought about Forrest Gump. How your boys talk about all different <laughs> types of shrimps, <laughs> barbecue shrimp, bubble shrimp. <laughs> Oh yeah. Wait, hey, that, it, it, but to each his own. You know, everybody has. You know, every, I mean, ain't nothing wrong with a shrimp dick. Like I was told everybody, ble- everybody blessed. Like, like, like I always tell women, if you don't got no ass, well, you lack in the back, you gain in the cat. You know, you got. You know, everybody blessed somewhere. You blessed somewhere. I mean, so, most of the times when they got shrimp dick, they probably be blessed in the mouth. But if you got terrible head a shrimp dick and terrible sex like you don't know how to do nothing you need some money it's like god really wasted time on you like what are you here for you can't do nothing he probably a good worker provider i don't give a fuck it's a good (laughs) provider with some good (laughs) pray for jesus (laughs) pray for jesus dang yeah with that being said like you know (laughs) <laughs> so what would you say is your best asset Which as mean? a woman period my best asset my best asset is my ass <laughs> I knew you was about to say that I already knew you was about to say that your ass oh <laughs> uh, no but you know um so like, um, before the BBL, I always been thick. Always hey, but did ass. you like your ass before that? Yeah, I had a nice ass. Oh, so what made you get the BBL? I just wanted it. I don't know. 
it really didn't it really didn't damn near went away. It's really back down to like the normal size it was before I got the BBL. And so you gotta I'm like redo the BBL? Yeah. So so you know like most girls with BBLs, they got like three, four rounds. I don't I'm still on one round. Like I'm going to get a second one. But most girls with the nice bodies like Ari and all them, they got they on three, four rounds. So like, you know, and like most females might don't know that. Like most females might not know you gotta keep going back and like do certain things. Yeah, that you gotta ass. keep going back. It's like it's like building a foundation. So you know, three four rounds. It's like maybe the first time you didn't have, you didn't even come with a foundation. So the first round is just to to form it. Then you gotta go back to get it. it you know, it just depends on how long it takes to make the ass perfect. And my first round was pretty good, so I probably would only need one more round. And that's because I didn't know what to do, so I slept on my hips and shit. So like, yeah, I probably only need one more. You sound like you're building a house. Yeah, it's like building a house. <laughs> you build a, you building a brick house. The foundation of the ass. You know, <laughs> first, you know, you, you got to put this layer. Then you got to put the second layer. So, like... Yeah. And, but does the same thing... I'm, like, required for... I'm, like, breasts? Yeah, you got to get your breasts redone. I think the doctor had told me every 10 years or so. Oh, wow, that's a lot of surgery. Yeah, but I'm going to get mine smaller because my doctor did them, like, too big. So, I'm going to get them smaller. So, if you could price it right now, how much you think it but your whole body cost? Um, last time I added up with every time I went and had surgery, it was right at 30000 I actually did a song and said... Hey, but that's a Camaro. Yeah, I did a song that said, <laughs> uh, spent the rack on my wig, 30 bands on my body. Yeah. Yes, it was It was right at 30 So I kind of feel females. If you spent 30 racks on your body, you shouldn't be letting nobody fuck for free. Nah, it's, it's like... It ain't about letting people fuck free. You don't let anybody fuck. You let people who are well. You, you know, know, you know, a lot of females. You know, are in some this people, thing. some men. You can't just go to them and be like, oh, uh, oh, I paid thirty bands on my body. You gotta pay me to fuck. Some men, you gotta ease into you. Like you gotta have gang with niggas. If you come straight to a nigga, like, oh, we fuck. You finna have to give me some money. They gonna they gonna look at you like that every time. You gotta ease that nigga in. You gotta make that nigga feel special. You know, I can't get y'all out of my game. But you know, you gotta ease your way in and but make that nigga start. But if you come at any, yeah, if you come at any man like straight up about money, you probably gonna have probably like one to five times he gonna but, fuck you because he gonna find somebody else. Like, yeah, but you that's, know, that's everybody got the same thing. That's what I'm saying. I know a lot of females who go straight to a nigga like, oh, if you ain't giving me this, you ain't doing that, that. But then it's, and then there's me who gonna ease my way in. Now this nigga sending bill money. He's sending this. He's sending that. He ain't gonna never tell you no. Versus this nigga who you went at the first time. Like, hey, give me this. And now he, you, you hit him up another time for something. He's like, bitch, no. Give me some pussy. Hey, you because a lot of females be really needing that money at that time when they talking to that dude. No, so I'm patient. If they can't be patient, man, I'm telling be, you, I'm they so be lit on the rent. Like, man, look, you want this? This is what it is. <laughs> I'm patient, especially if I already got money. If I already, you know, my pockets your, already good. But your, you average, know? but your average, but your average person in this world right now don't have no money. We are so in one recession. Most recession. females do though, and let me tell you, this, I didn't saw this like in the last year. I didn't saw this with females. A lot of females they go. They go strip real quick. They go sell their ass real quick. They go run up that money to get their body done. And a lot of females' mindset right now is if I get my body done, it's going to change my life. As soon as I get my body done, niggas going to start tricking on me. They're going to start spoiling me. They're going to start fall, flying me out just because my body is done. So these females are going to bust in their ass to save up the money to get their body done. They go get their body done. Now they don't even have the money for the aftercare. Do, 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 do this. Now they depending on a nigga. Oh, my body done. Now a nigga finna come save me. A nigga finna come spoil me, trick on me. This. But what they feeling to realize is that all these bitches got their body done. Bodies are everywhere. Everybody niggas understand. don't give a fuck about bodies. It's niggas that I, mind you, I know a lot of niggas, it's niggas who will go fuck a bitch that ain't got her body touched before he even look your way, baby, and you done went and spent bands on your body. Niggas do not give a fuck about a body. If you go get your body done, it's for yourself. It's for your own self-confidence because I promise these niggas don't give a fuck everybody body done. So no, you getting your body done is not finna change your life. A nigga is not finna come save you because you get your body done. Niggas not finna come pay all your bills because you get your body done. Your life is not finna go up because you get your body done. If anything, you finna put yourself in debt and you're gonna be a fine broke bitch. There's a lot of them out here. Like, I know a lot of men that still love on a fully on a natural women. Yeah. But, but they'll fuck on BBL women. Yeah. Like, I don't get it. Like, it's crazy because, like, you didn't did all this thinking nigga about the about to cuff I'm you. I'm telling you, it don't He's the one fun with you. Like, me personally, this is how I look at it. Like, you know, they probably come mad at me. But if you got a BBL, 
you look like almost an Instagram model, almost mm-hmm. tripping to me. So the only thing I can see is us, you know, I'm about to try to, I'm about to try to really have fun with you. I'm yeah. thinking like, yeah, like, like, like I'm thinking when you come with BBL, you come with threesomes and everything. I think you yeah, just yeah, yeah. come with the whole nine yards. You're like a fun girl. Yeah, you're a fun girl. If you got all that done, you're a fun girl to me. That's yeah. what my mindset is. Yeah. Cause you, because you did that. Like in my mind, you fun to every dude that got money. Which basically that's how it is, and I'm not I'm not gonna lie. I'm I'm gonna be real about it. Basically, most of the girls who got the bodies and shit like that, they they want a lavish lifestyle, so they only chasing niggas with money. I didn't sit around. And I'm about. I didn't I didn't stop hanging with females for this because it's kind of disgusting for me. They sit around on their Instagram all day waiting for the next rapper to hit them up and fly them out. Oh, bitch! I'm going to his show. I'm trying to get chose. These bitches trying to get chose for a lifestyle, and it's like I like bitch. What? Man, I know a woman that quit her job the first time. Oh, like Meek Mill came now, yeah. She jumped on the plane, gave some head, and got flew back here with no job. <laughs> yeah, they doing that to get chosen. The thing, is, and and it's crazy because like I didn't I didn't fuck with a few rappers that's up there, like even A list right now. They A list, and it's like you 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 can't think because a nigga hit you up and want to fly you out. He finna change your life. Like <laughs> these niggas just want to fuck at the end of the day. And if he do fly you out and he fucking with you, that don't mean he got to he finna spoil you and just send you back home with 10, 20 bands. Nine times ten, you finna go home empty handed and saying, "Oh, I fucked this rapper," or something like that. Like it's nothing special. Well, these rappers ain't special. Yeah. Hey, but most of these females have this. Ever had these dreams of becoming like Ari and something like that? You gotta think about it. Like once you get pregnant for a rapper or a football player, you could probably get some TV deals. You get booked at some clubs. Every girl had these same type of dreams. Who don't have no talent? But their talent is they ass. They ass it. I don't know. Ari, Ari. Everybody ain't got Ari storyline. Everybody can't get it like Ari. Like you got to think them that all Ari Ari all Ari boyfriends was like famous big drug dealers, rappers and shit. So that's just just been her life. Everybody that ain't everybody's storyline. Like. And these, these, I don't know, these females around here, they, they waiting to be chose. Like, that's that's what they wake up every day and dream of, getting chose by a rapper or something. Like, that shit is crazy because these rappers not special. I promise you'll be thinking that these rappers is like, yo, dream guy, you meet them, you like, nigga, you corny as fuck. Like, nigga, you lame as hell. Like, I ain't gonna lie, out of all the rappers I didn't talk to and dated, and they probably see this, you know, I ain't gonna expose y'all name, but... Half of y'all lame as fuck, and I have told y'all. Like, it's probably only, like, two or three that I actually like. It's like, you too real to even be in this industry. Like, But most of them was like, you just a lame with hey, money. Hey, hey, but you know why they lame with money? Hey, because they already been tampered with by Diddy. <laughs> yeah, they been tampered with by Diddy. They gave that ass up. They, they didn't say no Diddy, baby. They got bent over. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie to you. I told yeah. somebody, I said, man... I can't be around like rappers, like famous ones. They like they sassy. As yeah, but they try to like uphold this type of image, and they be trying too hard. You know who the realest rapper I ever met during my life in R.I.P. Him, Trouble. That's the realest rapper. He don't. He right. he just. But, he, hey, he but Trouble. That hard. Yeah, but Trouble was never mainstream. Trouble just was always Trouble. Yeah, and, and, and Trouble and Boosie, it's a reason why Trouble and Boosie get along, but they always been themselves. Yeah, and that's probably why they would have, even to this day, I, even if Trouble was to this day, I, he probably wouldn't have went mainstream because he's too real. He too ratchet. He, he ratchet at heart, which is a good thing because he, he not judgmental or none of that, but he just a real nigga. Like, right. I fuck with him. Hey, but like, Trouble is someone that would make a whole lot of money and still go to his hood and sit on the porch. Exactly, and unfortunately, that's what cost him his life, R.I.P., but yeah, he's that type of person. And the crazy part is being a famous music artist and things like that, but we often get too comfortable thinking we could just go to the same places as yeah, him. Yeah, for sure. Like, you thinking that, you know, especially anybody home, gonna do me nothing. Like, when you blow up, you want to go home, because it's like, especially if you ain't always been known for that at home, you always been known for being down or being regular, whoever. You know, you ain't never heard that, that status back home. So once you blow up, you want to go back home and, you know, show out, like, oh, I can do this for my city, and I can do this for my city. I can I can be in my city like this. But whole time, it's a few people in your city that's hating and they want to get your ass out of here just so they won't have to see you living a life that they not living y'all grew up together why are you living this life i'm not they trying to get your ass out right. of here but that's how and know. every successful person is someone in your hometown that's sitting there thinking that's that gonna you, get your ass that out you of don't here. deserve it you, yeah and you did nothing to these people they just thinking i grew up with you you know we went to school together why you got that and i don't got that so in order to make myself feel better and me not have to look at you how that i'm gonna get your ass out of here 
Right. So how many people in your hometown? Hey, who? Looking at this you right now. Me hey, looking at this right now, thinking like, man, she don't deserve what she had. She don't deserve to even have <clears throat> but that fan base she have. Man, if you watch my old interviews, I've been most hated in my city since a kid. Like you can go on my YouTube right now. I got videos when I was like thirteen, me and my cousin spiting and shit. Like we always had like at thirteen years old, we was running the streets fighting with knives and shit in our purse because we had bitches with their whole families trying to jump on us and shit. Like so we always been like most hated in the city, always. So it's nothing new to me. Like it was it, it the hate was so strong in my city, I had to move. Like, I had to move because it's like, if, if I stay down here, I'm going to be fighting every day. Every day I walk outside, I'm going to walk outside with knives in my purse. I'm going to have to worry about fighting these bitches. Them trying to put me in jail. Bitches was pressing fake charges against me. It's like they was doing anything just to weird shit. Like, and I never knew why. Since to this day, I tell them bitches, like, y'all bitches always hated on me for no reason. And I ain't had shit. Like, my mama done went there for me. I was in the streets at 12. I ain't had shit. Like, what was y'all reason for hating? Because I was a rapper? Because I was... You know, popular and pretty, but I didn't have shit. Promise you, I didn't have shit. I'm in the streets at 12, not having shit, but I'm rapping. I'm popular. I'm popular because I'm pretty and I'm rapping. That's all. Hey, people going to find a way to hear <laughs> So being in Dallas, like, you know, and, and, like, and like you saw this man from ground up. Did you think that Charleston White would actually be as big as he is? Because I remember like four years ago, shout out Terry Blue. He told me, man. And you should interview Charleston White. And I didn't get what the hell Charleston White was doing. Yeah. And so what you think? Yeah, I, I, I saw it. Like, when they first started posting, I'm like, damn, they blowing him up fast. But um, me actually meeting him and knowing him as a person, like, I can call his phone right now. Like, knowing him as a person, he um, he's strategic. He know exactly what he doing. It's all playing out exactly how he he thought it would play out. Like, so that's why when people take him so serious. I kind of laugh at because I be like, it kind of like the same shit I be doing. Like y'all taking it serious, but he know exactly what he doing, and it got him to where he at. So like, and so like, do you ever feel like he actually be going? I'm like too far sometimes. Like we're like fuck your dead son or dead homie or something. That's like that. too far. That's too far. But you, um, yeah. When I, I ain't gonna lie. When I saw that, I didn't like it. Comment on it or nothing. I didn't hit him up about it. Nothing. But I ain't like that. But it's like. Uh, other parts of him like the snitch and shit it's, you know shit just you know it is what it is but um yeah the talking about people family and shit and talking about kids that's not i think he go too far sometimes i think he i think he lose his stuff he in jump into character sometimes. too far <laughs> yeah because um i think he forget what he doing it for and i'm not gonna say what he doing it for because you know he told me it's working out for him but i think he be forgetting his purpose and he he go way too far and my mind like it's very dangerous but it's Hey, but it's also back to playing with people, kids. Yeah. Is dangerous. But I'm talking about just the whole thing what he be doing with everybody. But the, yeah, hey, but the is. great thing is, like I told you earlier before this interview, I'm like, like even just Dallas and New Orleans is so different. It's like, if they had someone like Charleston White down here, he probably would have he probably would have made it that far. He would have been. Yeah, he, yeah, he would have been on a. On I a just said this the other day. Charleston would have been dead if he was in Baton Rouge. He would have been dead if he was in New Orleans. anywhere in like, Louisiana, anywhere the top, yeah. like Streetport. I say this Baton Baton all the time. Me been living in. Texas for five years I say this all the time I even say this to people around me I'm like y'all Texas people ain't nothing like us Louisiana like y'all ain't nothing like hey, us but just like, like someone I'm like swung on him in the barbershop no one would have swung on him they would have downed him in there man say Louisiana man if that man was in New Orleans he would have been dead like there's no ifs ands and buts about it he wouldn't be able to walk freely somebody hey, would have been got down on him just because hey it'd be too bold he doing a lot of, but yeah. hey but I'm glad that it's working out for him you know, I'm going to say that. Yeah, but, you know. It, it, it's, <laughs> it's still it's, dangerous. It's, it's, it's very dangerous, you know. Gotcha. Um, um, yeah. So, so I ain't going to hold you too long because, you know, we in, <laughs> hey, we live in the studio with Michael on the beat. Yeah. And, um, you know, he a busy man. But um, I'm going to say this. Um, So I'm like, what's next for you? Um, So, yeah, me and Michael just made a bounce song. We going to um, drop that and shoot the video real soon. But um, I'm just working on an EP right now. So I'm finna get ready to drop an EP, and um, then it's more the March though. Like I got uh, I got a lot of shit planned. Like I'm gonna drop like four videos this month, and then I've been in contact with certain people for like marketing and shit like that. Like I'm finna be a lot of places this month. Like starting this month, so it's finna be like a whole like kind of rebrand, but not a rebrand. 
Gotcha. And you know, hey, but this episode was live, and it's and it's it is also episode. I'm like 177 or 178 of No Lucene podcast as well. But it's gonna be on both. Yeah. But hey, but I'm glad this is the first time that we pulled out the mics, and we had our guests. I'm mean, Nina Loretta. Oh, let me tell y'all. I gotta tell y'all this. I gotta say this before we. End. So my friend, she's scared to go. So y'all know I'm spiritual, right? So like when I'm in the woods, I like to go do. You know, shit that I like to do, you know, blah, blah, blah. So I try to take my friend to the graveyard with me. And she's scared. Like, I ain't mad at her. <laughs> you know why I'm not mad at her? Because, you know, on the internet, hey, but they think you some type of, I'm like, voodoo queen. Exactly. <laughs> you hear it in the I background. To go to a fucking... Yo. Hey, but she might turn to, um, Blair, she might turn to Blair Witch on you. Well, y'all, tomorrow I'm going to a Marie Laveau grave site, and I'm going to blog it for y'all because I see how much y'all love it on TikTok. So I'm going to blog it for y'all. I'm not scared to go. So before we leave, you know, hey, but like, what's your message to people painting, you know, that picture? Because, you know, also people don't know that who told the world that that I'm like voodoo is, is, is exactly evil. So let's get on that thing. So like. First of all, voodoo is not evil. People got to understand the difference between voodoo, hoodoo, light magic, and dark magic. What I practice, and I say this all the time, let me say it again, heavenly, I practice hoodoo and light magic. I don't fuck with voodoo. Let me tell you something about voodoo. Voodoo is not for all bad. Like, if you got people who study E5, people who study light magic, it's, it's times I did voodoo for myself. It's like, Sometimes I did voodoo for my finances. Sometimes I did voodoo for protection and shit like that. But as far as doing voodoo on other people, no, I would never do that. Because And I wouldn't advise nobody. Because the thing is, when you do voodoo on other people, it's always, I don't give a fuck who did your voodoo for you, whether you do it yourself or somebody else do it, it's always going to come back. So when you do a voodoo spell on somebody else, it's basically you making that um, deal like, oh, I'm going to see this person go through this temporarily, but I know it's coming back to me 10 times harder. So you basically fucking yourself up. So no, I don't do voodoo on other people. I do it on myself for my own reasons. But what I practice is Ifa and hoodoo. So yeah, I do do spell work. I am into um, divine energy, stuff like that. But again, what I practice is Ifa. What I, um, and I advise all people of African descent is to go practice Ifa or stu at least study Ifa. Start by studying Ifa. It's a, it's not like a super bad thing or like voodoo, stuff like that. It's really a part of your history. If you uh, look up Ifa, you will see that it's a part of a... Um, it started during slavery to get away from slave owners and their treatment and stuff. So, like, it's really history. Y'all just that white people brainwash y'all into thinking voodoo is bad because voodoo was literally used to get away from them by your ancestors so yeah it's not bad do y'all fucking history and stop every time y'all hear new orleans or hear voodoo oh i'm scared i'm scared i'm scared no learn about your fucking ancestors learn about the people who are guiding you the people who are over your shoulders every day you don't see the people who guiding you through life that's your fucking ancestors it's not voodoo you've been brainwashed go do your research <laughs> With that being said, last but not least, tell the world what can he find you on social media and everywhere else. Um, Nina, <laughs> Nina Loretta. I mean, Instagram Nina Loretta, Twitter at the Nina Loretta, Facebook Nina Loretta, all music streamers and the sites Nina Loretta. Period. Nola Z, make a screen. You heard me.